to my fellow Freedom Low Sovereign Thinkers. Thank you for tuning in to LL3 Podcast. My name is Craig Trans, meeting from the beautiful Swampy Mango, South Florida. And today's date is Monday, February 1st, 2021. Yeah, I just read that Screech has passed away. Saved by the bell. Died of cancer. 44 years old. I watched some of the stuff, some of the shows. I wasn't a big fanatic over it, but it was entertaining to an extent. However, it's really shame when folks' lives are that short. This is why I'm always, um, you know, tell folks to always be good to each other. Yeah, never wish anyone ill, and always love your neighbor at the best of your ability. We all have disagreements, differences, and all that, but never try to be vindictive to anyone. I have another little history about Haiti. I like to hear all sides to the matter. And, um, I remember the time reading about the revolution and all that, and when they won their freedom. The other states were considered, the United States considered them a threat, so they did an embargo on them. You know, but sometimes you hear all sides. We don't know how accurate that information is, and I'm not defending their decision. It's just um, interesting things have occurred. But um, it's a good little read. Activist Post did uh, stuff on that, and you could actually read it for yourself. They're claiming that all the Africans were there first, and uh, Asians were there first, and the Vikings were there before Columbus, you know, it was all the same scenario. Remember, it's a place called Middle Earth. Everything was like puzzled together one time. It spreads in a long in a period of time. So we doesn't matter right now. But the ones that are here, let's just make sure we're all on this planet together. So so there's gonna be leaps and bounds. We're all standing on blood regardless of where you're at. So all this BS privilege, mind control, divide and rule, you gotta flush that out of your system. It's very infectious, I would say. And of course Biden signs he said what he signed um is that like forty executive orders already? <laughs> Good grief. Well, stuff is happening as usual, and um, Robin, the Robin Hood thing looks like it got dropped. People are buying silver. Hedge fund, hedge fund managers are wigging out. They don't want to see the little people get wealthy. Just them, only themselves. They don't want us all be enslaved like a bunch of piss ants, peasants. House and field peasants, to be exact. Well, <laughs> hey, I just stick it to the man once in a while. But um, I do enjoy that. When they, they're wigging out, it has to be good. When the state fears its people, it's fantastic, okay? I've always got to look at those areas. Yes, it's going to be insane. The economies will, may crash around the world. The global reset. But it doesn't mean... We have to hide, hide, put our heads in the in the sand or in the dirt like a bunch of ostriches. They're really pushing for this whole one world order propaganda machine. Convince us all for our well being, for our own good. Sit down and shut up. Well, too bad. Make me if you if you can, if you dare. So that's why I'm always consistent on my view, my views. If I have if I someone says hey I made an error share it with me it wouldn't hurt I would always appreciate it. Don't just run don't just slip off. A lot of folks are good at that. Hot air rhetoricians right. So, um, yeah, Kanye West prepares for custody battle. 
I don't want my kids to grow up at a fake ass or uh, whatever. <laughs> Rochester police used pepper spray on a nine-year-old girl. Wonder how accurate that story is. Stimulus check dependents. Why a third check might bring your household more. If you want to put the Federal Reserve out of business, I see. Progressive Dems urge to send recurrent coronavirus stimulus checks. I want to just reopen the damn place. Stop telling us how to live. Uh huh. Absolutely. I'm just running around here. Yeah, Dustin Diamond. That's what I mean. Dustin Diamond dead. Dustin Diamond. That's Screech. May so be forever free, of course. Yeah, never wish anyone ill, right? Absolutely not. Never wish anyone ill will. Folks out there. Have that mindset, I avoid them like a plague. I can care less. Space contaminators. Yeah, it's windy out there. It looks like it's uh, getting a little chilly for the Floridians out here. 65 degrees. I love it. I go out there. I can go there on the beach right now, right? <laughs> I've done it one time in 55 degree weather. I enjoyed it, man. I'm like, got some sun, hit the water. The water was awesome. I'm going to do it again. So, all right, well, without enough of my ranting here, without further ado, I'll do a couple of um, stories here. And this one, of course, naturalnews.com. Texas movement to separate Lone Star State from Biden's America, backed by Texas nationalist movement. I did a show on it a while back, so let's see what... Let's see what J.D. Hayes has to say. For decades, many Texans have contemplated a life as a citizen of their own country, but it was an election theft of 2020 and a combination of other factors that finally inspired several people in the Lone Star State to act. For generations, Texans dreamed of Texas becoming an independent, self-governing state free from the control of bureaucrats and political class in Washington, D.C., before 2005, there was no organization that exclusively dedicated to making it a reality. Then the Texas Nationalist Movement was born, the group said in this website. We work to secure the, and protect the political, cultural, and economic independence of the nation of Texas and to restore and protect a constitutional republic and inherit rights of the people of Texas. Notes the group's mission statement. What exactly would a nation of Texas offer that even Americans living in relative, relatively free states like Dakotas, 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 the, the Dakotas, Missouri, Idaho, and Florida don't? More freedom, more liberty, more independence from the nanny, nanny state federal government that has at least some influence over the single state at the moment. The Texas nationalist movement isn't a white nationalist movement, by the way. As though that even needs to be said. Far from it, white nationalism or any form of racism is the antithesis of liberty and freedom. Okay, so all you cultural Marxists out there, even in Texas, don't use that white privileged propaganda because it's going to bite you in the butt. I'll continue on here. The, in the fact, the group embraces several of our country's founding concepts at today. Provide the foundation for self-governance in the way that the way our framers really intended. In addition to nationhood and independence, the movement advocates for one moment. Family, the basic cultural building block of Texas is the family, and notice that the group does not define what family should consist of because, again, doing so would be a tantamount to limiting freedom and independence. So anyone from Black Lives Matter get offended by that? Who the hell cares, right? Absolutely. People to and from the people, all political power is inherited in the Texan people. And all free governments are founded on their authority and instituted 
for their benefit. The Texan people have at all times the inalienable right to alter, reform, or abolish their government in such matter, manner as they may think expedient. Entrepreneurialism. Entrepreneurialism, yeah. This is a basic economic building block of Texas, as entrepreneurs drive technology, technological, societal, and even cultural development. Primacy of care, of cause. The Texas, national, Texas nationalism is the primary secular cause of all Texans and is distinct and superior to all other secular causes. Primacy, primacy of nation. The interests of Texas supersede the interests of all other nations and states. Texas first will be, if, if you will, modeled after former President Donald Trump's America First policies a decade before he ran for the Oval Office. Indomitability. The interests of Texas supersede the interests of all other nations and states. Think of this as a Texas size can do it attitude related to future of government repression in the United States. What every American needs to know. There's a link for that. You can check it out yourselves. Inherited rights. Inherent rights. Every Texan possesses inherited and inalienable rights and should have the ability to exercise those rights as they choose, except that these are modeled very closely after the U.S. Constitution's Bill of Rights, which were, at the time, tremendously empowering and groundbreaking. And if you read the Texas Constitution, Article 1, Bill of Rights, is self-explanatory. Building on initial greatness, Texas' unique history serves as a foundation for our current and future greatness. Since our inception, of the, since our inception the Texas Nationalist Movement has connected with hundreds of thousands of Texans, conducted thousands of media interviews, participated in international conferences on self-determination, and grown the movement for Texas independence into one of the largest in the world, the group's website adds. In fulfilling our mission, we have given a home to all Texans who believe that Texas would be better off as an independent nation, it says. As of this writing, the movement has nearly 400,000 declared supporters, a number that continues to grow and will likely to explode as another effort to remake Texas great again. The Texas movement is launched. Big things are coming for this big state, we believe, and what's more, Texas move to be independent again is likely to awaken like-minded Americans in other states. And based on what's been going on of centralization, federal, federal intervention, overreach and all that, it's understandable. It's been going on for a very long time, my friends. This is one of the reasons why a lot of the southern states seceded. Thirteen of them decided to secede. First was six, then seven more did to leave the Union the first time because of federal overreach. And interesting about that, and there was a, and there was a lot of other states were thinking, thinking about seceding also, known as the Central Confederacy. You don't really hear about that, but it does. It did exist. It was going to happen, but based on the war with Fort Sumner. It was a setup, an abandoned uh, fort, because um, there was a claim that they were going to use that base to attack the southern states, supposedly. It was a trap, and all those states that were, were talking about Central Confederacy served, went back and served for the Union. But that's one thing that's very intriguing. And now what you see with the whole cancel culture, federalization... Political, uh, political, political PC, PC movements, the fake woke movement, yeah, they're all fakes, frauds, hire guns, shysters, and all that. And I'm not saying these people and all these uh, involved in these movements are all bad folks either. It's just the people, the folks that are the organizers, the uh, the leaders, the coordinators. They're um real shady people, but nothing new. It's been like that for a long time. Cause and effect. That's the that's the science uh on the out science uh scientific law. Cause and effect. This is what's been happening. Now with Joe Biden and Kamala Harris, the Biden administration wants to have watched the, the United States of America revolves around us. What did I just say? 
Come on, man. Let's think about that. That's what they want, and look what's happening. You make all these threats, telling people how how should we think under under your thumb. And this is called, this is why something like this is happening. And I'm expecting other states to do the same, if necessary. The truth of the matter is, folks, we got the Tenth Amendment. We can nullify anything that is invalid. And there's state state resolutions, local municipality resolutions, even from the Patriot Act, Health Pop, Florida Health Powers Act. Just give you a couple. It can be um, it can be countered. So um, yeah, notification is the remedy. And this is one thing. But I do have to give uh, Texas props because they're seeing a bigger picture. So it's been an, an ordeal for a very long time, and now look what's happening. We can shut we can shut up shut down DC if we want. And bring it back to a constitutional form of government. And I know that place is a cesspool anyway. We we'll have a new capital. <laughs> Why not? Who cares what the demented uh crackheads think, you know? Crackpots. <laughs> demented crackpots. DC! Demented crackpots. How the feel being a demented crackpot community, you know? Uh, I'll just say, it's just a time to be alive, right? Absolutely. I want to do one more here, folks. It is from the Activist Post. And this is written by J.P. Cortez. State legislators, I sound money reforms. This is um, precious metal. More state lawmakers than ever are introducing salmon legislation in the opening days of the 2021 legislative session. Several states will consider measures to remove sales or general excise taxes from the purchases of gold, silver, and other precious metals. Many other states will weigh bills to eliminate income taxes on gold and silver. Still others will decide whether state funds can be held in the physical gold and silver and may even consider establish a state-chartered bullion depository, like happens happened in Texas. With debt-funded spending and money printing in our nation's capital at neck-break speed, will states see the wisdom of enacting measures to counteract these policies of currency debasement? Here's a rundown of newly introduced state legislation. In Mississippi, House Bill 375, sponsored by Representative Henry Zober and Representative Brady Williamson, and White House Bill 978, sponsored by Representative Joel Baumgar, include language to exempt precious metals from sales taxes. Two Mississippi neighbors, Alabama and Louisiana, have already exempt precious metals from sales taxes, so the Mongol man... Magnolia State will continue to be at the competitive disadvantage if it maintains its current policy of taxing real money. South, uh, South Carolina's Representative Stuart Jones has introduced three money, sound money measures. House Bill 3378 excludes from gross income any net capital gain derived from the exchange of precious metal bullion. And Jones's House Joint Resolution 3379 will create a committee to explore the feasibility of a state chartered metals depository. Finally, the representative from Lawrence, South Carolina, has put forward House Bill 3377, which reaffirms that gold and silver are money. Building on prior effects efforts to make precious metals purchases tax free, Tennessee Senator Rusty Crow introduced Senate Bill 251. Meanwhile, Tennessee Representative Bob Husley and Senator Paul Rose introduced House Bill 353 and Senate Bill 279, respectively. These bills would create a study commission regarding a gold depository for the volunteer state and a report of findings to the state, Senate, and House of Representatives. In Arkansas, a measure that would um, eliminate the sales tax on precious metals purchases 
has been has been submitted for introduction by Representative Delia Hawk, Representative Robin Lustrum, and Senator Mark Johnson. Senator Johnson introduced a similar measure in 2019. In Alabama, Representative Andrew Swarwell will reintroduce measures to remove income taxes from gold and silver, while Alabama enacted a precious metal sales tax exemption into law in 2018. The original um, bill sponsor, Senator Tim Melson, uh, plans to introduce a bill this year to clear up some ambiguity in the 2018 language and to push out a sunset provision for another five years. Way to the West, Representative Val Akimoto and Representative Dale Kabayashi in Hawaii have introduced Bill House Bill 1184, a measure to exempt precious metal from Hawaii's general excise tax. And Idaho Representative Robin, Ron Nate and Senator Steve, Stephen Vick ha- have put forward House Bill 7 to permit the state treasurer to hold a portion of state funds in physical gold and silver. Idaho hoped to join Ohio and Texas as one of the few states make such a move to secure state assets against the risk of inflation and financial turmoil and or to achieve capital gains as measured in Federal Reserve notes. Washington State removed the sales sales taxes against sound money decades ago, but a lawmaker hopes to take it a step further. House Bill 14... 1417 introduced by Representative Bob Chase and co-sponsored by Representative Bob McCaslin seeks to eliminate all evergreen state taxes on the only form of money mentioned in the U.S. Constitution. Sound money forces could face some defensive battles in 2021 as well. Fortunately, there are now 39 states that have removed some of or all sales tax from precious metals, but during the short 2020 session, Revenue-hungry politicians in Maryland, Pennsylvania, and Washington State try to buck the trend and repeal those sales tax exemptions. Of course, they always got to have those knuckleheads believe they're smarter than everybody else. All, all three of these re- recent attempts to reinstate taxes on the monetary metals have been defeated, but taxpayers should be wary of their return. By communicating with lawmakers, providing testimony, and igniting a vocal grassroots response, the Sound Money Defense League and its allies continue to make case the case for sound money and to defend the existence of current sound money policies. Massive debt finance government spending in response to COVID-19 has re-emphasized the importance of sound money. As state legislators and Congress considered actions in the face of the global pandemic and an unprecedented economic meltdown, they would be wise to remove the, the sensitives that stand in the way of protecting their citizens and their states will sound with sound constitutional money. As let you know, folks, J.P. Cortez, he's a resident of North Carolina, graduate from Auburn University. He is a political policy director of the Sound Money Defense League. So check him out. Follow him on Twitter at JP Cortez27. <laughs> well, I think it's great, folks. Because here's the thing the Federal Reserve is illegal. Period. Article 1, Section 8 talks about that. I think it's Clause 6, I believe. I could be mistaken. About regulating money, gold and silver. And of course, Article 1, Section 10 states can use money as long as it's gold and silver coins. End of story. So it's done. I think this is great because they're all expecting the same thing. This huge debt increase. Washington, D.C., the House, the original uh, rep, um, the originators of controlling the revenue, just pissing the money away. It's down the drain, folks. Like toilet paper, right? Absolutely. And those it's great. You can't blame President Trump for it. Like him or not. Because if this goes down, people in there are done. Plain and simple. DC looks like it's one big bowl of recycled pus. 
Somebody's the way to go, folks. Make sure you, the ones in your state will be supporting it, including Florida, which I'm, I live in Florida, so I got to do the same thing. Every state that should do, everyone should do the same, including around the world, okay? So um, screw the fiat money system. Look what happened to Venezuela, Argentina, Weimar Republic of Germany, all right? Just giving you all those facts. It's just, today's, the past is today's greatest teacher. If you don't learn from it, you're doomed to repeat it. All right, well, that will be it. I thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download and share this about your social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or something that's interesting you want to check out, whatever you do, please send your correspondence to the core. Furthermore, I'll leave the, the footnotes of these articles on my speaker page. And if you want to contact me, you can hit me at lookyluckenumbers03 at protonmail.com. If you want to donate, you can get me at paypal.me or cash.app forward slash Loki Luck number three. And I got a few things. I'm going to hit some donation places as well. I do have a Patreon account, but it looks like I haven't been really using it as much. That's okay, too. So, all right. Once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that the maniac resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love. And may your guardian spirits be with you.